hello it's me again i've got this little job to do for someone beautiful clock which is wonderful don't want to get my monkey fingers all over it i've been asked to make it stable on the top of there so i think what i'm going to do first is let's make a pattern of that so we've got a straight edge on the cardboard i'm going to put that onto there push these little brackets up against the cardboard like that and then draw around that right cut that out it looks pretty good so I'm going around with a fine liner just to take this little bit of excess off so I've got it exactly right right that fits on there now that works so what I want to do now is find the center of the pattern on a center line so that I can marry it up with the center line of that so center line next right so 74 mil from the edge 74 mil from the edge that's correct now what I can do is work out so the reason I put a block of wood here is because bits sticking out the back I need to get I will cramp this in place uh, this will be the wall because this hangs from a wall I'll cramp that in place and then set the clock up on a centre line. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll put a centre line on the bench. Centre line on the bench. So I've got a centre line there, centre line here. Right, you can see what's going on now. I'm on the centre line there. I've got a centre line here. I've got that. Now I can set the clock in the right position and move it around knowing that i have got to get the center. I could do with fixing that down. I'll just look for some pins. I think I'll pin it down. Right, now you can see why I'm a bit, being a bit fussy about this. This line... Yeah, this line here is a center line. So if I'm holding the phone up in the middle now, that's the center line. But it also runs down from the six down onto there. So I'm happy with that position now. I'm away, I've got to come a bit further away from there. It's all about getting the position right. I'm eyeing up from the centre pin here down to there. I could get a square, put a square on that line and see how that lines up. And actually it just needs to go that way a bit. You can't see this, sorry. I'm eyeing this square with that line and the top but also down the bottom getting it all lined up so i'm nine mil away there i'm you can't see that sorry but it's nine mil away from there so it's sitting in exactly the right place for me to draw around the feet as i'm drawing around the feet onto the cardboard i'm getting to see where they are because i'm going to make a little wooden base that fits in between these feet that helps locate the clock onto the base. It'll be pretty good. As you can see, I've just drawn around there with a pen just to get the line exactly right. Now I should be able to move that. There we go. There are my four legs. Brilliant. Now I've got to transfer those onto a piece of wood. 4.12 is the diameter of the feet. So I'm going to get a drill 4.2. And that's the largest. So all four feet are different diameters, which is a great sign that it's pretty old. So I will do it 4.2 and there'll be a little bit of slack in it, but not much, fraction of a millimeter. Let's get a drill bit, 4.2. Center point drill with a little spur on it at 4.3. So the next thing is the height. So I've got to get the height of this little feet, little foot, which uh, which is quite cute. Let's get the height. So the height, which is going to be the thickness of the piece of wood, is 3.1 mil. I've got this piece of mahogany, and as you can see, it's been varnished. It's been through the planer, and it's it's about four or five mil thick, and Actually, it needs tidying up. So what I'll do is I'll put it through the planer, uh, get rid of some of these bands or marks, get rid of that, get it down to 
three millimeters and then uh, I'll be able to cut bits off the end and use those bits and then I'll have the rest for whatever I want. Forgot to mention, my thicknesser doesn't like getting down to three mil because the blades would be close to the bed. So what I do is I put in a dummy base. So that goes in there, it's got a strip on the back. That goes in there and then I feed, feed this through until it starts taking it off and then I measure this rather than going by, going by the size by those dimensions there I just measure that let's do it Three point five. I'm not going any thinner than that. That's a usable piece of mahogany now. At three point five, it's been here for a number of years. It's flat. It's great. It's seasoned. There's a little bit of muck going on there. All right, that's it. I can cut some bits off this. So the snipe. If you don't know about snipe, I'll tell you about snipe one of the days. There it is, right up to there. Forty-five mil on my plane. Okay, let's sort this. So this is the other pattern, this is going on a centre line, so that's going to go there, following the centre line from the card onto the wood, now I know that's right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, there isn't a sharp end on this pin. but I want it to locate, I don't want the two to move. I've got a drill here. So I'm just gonna complete these holes manually. Right, I've completed those manually. Center line is on the center line and the center line down here. So now I'm just going to drill straight through there. Always have a piece of wood that you can just drill into. Put the centre point on there. Good long centre point on these. Which means if I need to correct it, I can. Right, that's it. Don't throw the pattern away, I'm going to need it. Right, the next part of this one is I'm going to leave, I think I'm going to leave the back on, which will, which will sit flush with the back. I think that makes sense. I should try it first, see if, see if it fits in there. Oh, there you go. Brilliant. Always being careful with the customer's clock. There you go. But that's worked, which is great. So I've got two choices. I either, well, I'll tell you what I was thinking to start with. What I was thinking to start with was to cut down between the center of this hole and just off the center of this hole, just off those and just off those centers so that you can see this little peg sticking out the bottom just in case somebody knocks it. We don't want to break these off. So we want people to see, I'm going to do that. It's what's best for the clock. In a way, it's not what's best for the customer, it's what's best for the clock. But even though I could make it look prettier, it's not about it looking pretty. It's about preserving the clock. Right, so as I say, just off center. And I think it's better to mark that that way around so I can see it. I'm going to leave that back in, I think. Because that back, back will be nice to butt up against the back of there. I'm looking for the same sort of similar shape here in these little windows of 
the cutouts. That'll do. That's pretty good. And down here. If you want to know what this pen is, it's a pigment liner. These are great. Pigment liner. This is, yeah, look how fine it is. It's great. Great for marking out this little delicate stuff. In fact, that line's so fine, I'm going to do it again because it's just blending in with the grain so much. And I'm going to continue this one off the end of the piece of wood at the front because I've forgotten that. Sometimes, you, you know, you mark the bit you want, but actually you want that extended bit to start because that's where your cut starts. You have to remember that. Right, there we go. Cut to those lines and I'll come back to you in a sec. So when you're planing, if you can put up an extra piece of wood behind it, see that gap there? If you can put an extra piece of wood and you can plane straight the way off without it breaking out. Don't worry about that bit of break. Let's have a look. Right, up to the line now. So that's it. So let's just try that and see how it fits. There you go. All four. All four feet are down and it can't escape. Rub it down now. Drill a couple of holes in it and it's ready to fix to the bracket. I'm just chasing the lines there now. Middle of the plane, over the middle of the piece of wood. Some great shavings in there. It's a bit too long either end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna knock these corners off so that I can just play right over the end. Now I'm going to plane right over the end grain and not worry about it breaking out. I always put it parallel to the bench so that I'm planing flat as often as possible. There you can see the end grain and how nice it is. So that's great. Just go take these corners off now with a chisel. Right, that's it. So I'll show you how quickly how I did it. I just got the chisel and just pared down to the line and this is where we are so there you go as you can see not much more to do there a bit of sandpaper and that one's sorted
Nice. Let's try it. It fits a little bit of play, not much. And actually, I should imagine it doesn't matter. Yeah, it fits the better that way. That's the way around it should go. Just mark that up with arrow to the front and put base on there. So that's hidden. That is ready to be fixed onto this. So let's get that done next. So that's marked up now. So this will fit over there. And onto there like that. Which is down. So now I'm just going to push it, position it, center it up, looking down the middle of the clock, down to the line which is reflecting on there. Equal here, equal there. Not too close to the back wall. That's quite nice. What I've got is two thirds here, one third at the back, one third behind it. I'll just hold it down with a coffee stick. Okay, it looks good. Double check it. I'm going to put the weight of the plane on there. I'm going to hold back here. Nice, nice. All right, that's it. So this is now the pattern that positions it. And what I'll do is I'll mark here with an X and I'll put an X there. Can you see that? So I know where that goes. Right, next thing to do, sort this thing out because it's got a few problems. Pattern on top of the little shelf. So I'm just marking where the center line is that way when I remove the pattern, I can extend this line to this line and then down the back have a centre line that I can then drop this on and then I can get some screws in there. So where the pinholes were, that's where I'm going to put two screws because they're not very thick. Get to that in a sec. Let's set this up. Right, centre lines on there. Not too clear, but I can just see it. When I clean this, it'll come off. So don't worry about using a fine liner on there. And the centre lines on the back there. So, right. Let's get this fixed down, but before we get this fixed down, we should have a look and see my little stash of screws. Um, I think this is probably the the one. I've got some short ones here. These are, these are pretty good, actually. I've got some very short ones there. Some tiny ones here, but they're shorter. Only shorter ones I've got will be in little bits and pieces where there's packets for things. I've got, saying that, I've got hinges and things in there. Um, maybe I should look through this. This is old screws. Hang on. These are old screws. Oh yeah, let's use some of these rather than new ones. Let's take this to the bench. Oh, some nice little pins in there. I wonder if I should use pins. No, let's use a couple of small screws. There's a few pins in there. How thick is this? Let's see how thick that is. It measures three eighths of an inch or 10 mil. So let's put that on the eight. No, that's too long. I'm gonna to struggle to find some tiny screws. Ah, right, okay. There's one, ah, there's a couple. Let me find those out. So I'm making sure the centre line's on the centre line and I'm happy with that. I think I'm just going to use these two holes where it's pinned. 
This drill is not the sort of drill you'd expect to see. As you can see, it's been ground as tapered so that it really does suit these tiny screws. I can drill a bit further. There you go. What do I do with this? Do I take this back off? Or do I leave it on? I think I'm going to take it off. I think it'll look better without that on there. Let me just show you what the clock will look like. I've got to be careful because this is in the voice and it's not um, it's not the most... Well, it's pretty strong. It's pretty stable actually. Right, so that's on the line. Yeah, I think I'm going to take it off because seeing this bit come out the back Seeing this hanging out the back doesn't look good, does it? Okay, let's take the back off. That'll do. Let's have a look. There you go, up to the line. Just a bit of the line left on there. That's all right, that's good. All right, let's put this back in here. Let's screw it together. Just going to file some of these loose fibers back into where they belong. Let's just try the, the clock back on there. Oh, is that the right way out? I don't know. Is that the right way out? Oh. Easily done. That's the back. Right. Let's screw this back together. I'm just going to count sync those lightly. Right, before I go too far as well, let me just show you. By each screw, I'm just going to take some of the finish off so that I can put a little blob of glue. So there and there. Just so, uh, not too much. In fact, so what I'll do now is I'll just square that up and put a piece, blob of glue there, blob of glue there. There we go. Let's screw that down there. Walnut, definitely. Right, let's get this screwed down. I'm going to open this hole up so that the screw fits in. So this is the important bit, really. The fact that that needs to slide all the way through there easily. If that can't go all the way through there, it, the thread won't pull it down onto there. So let's open that hole up. Right, there you go. That's done. Let's try the clock, see how it fits. Does it fit? Yes, it does. Does it look all right? Yeah, it does. Does it slide off? No, it doesn't. Yeah, right, get that bit. Right, so that's done. So I can take the pattern away. That's the back. So now those will locate in there. So bigger hole again. Bigger hole in there. A little bit of a countersink. Take the edges off. <coughs> so glue on there again. I'm just going to use that screw to 
to lo locate in there. There you go, there's that one. So just turn that a couple of times. And then locate this one. There you go, brilliant. One done. Back to the first one. Take the top off there because it was a bit rough. Job done. Should we try that one? I should try that and see how the clock fits. It goes around there. That does fit nicely. This is the reviver that I use. It's settled down now and gone a bit. But this is the difference between the two. So if we look inside here, we can see traces of wax, which I've had to warm up and get off because look at it. And this is one that I've now finished. Used a reviver and then I've gently gone over it with a brush that I use for polishing up. For buffing up wax surfaces. I know the colour's not 100% but actually you will only see a little bit of it. But it's that sheen I'm after which is if you see the two side by side you can see the difference. They, um, they really are quite different. There you go you can see the colour in this now. It's quite grey and dull and those bits of polish on there the, the polish isn't happy on there at all. So next thing I'm going to do is clean this one up. That one's done. Clean this one up and then uh, I'll take it from there. And sometimes this sort of thing happens. So I've cleaned it with my reviver. As you can see, it's looking a bit shiny. And, and this has fallen off. And if I look closely at this, you can see it's been super glued back on. 
Mm, bit of animal glue on that end grain. Little bit on there, but that's super glue. So I've got to wait for all this to dry now, clean that off, clean all this all this glue off because there's animal glue underneath super glue there. Uh, clean all that off and then fix it back on in the right place. So that's again, I've got to wait till tomorrow. Great. So let's plane this thing down. No, it's alright. Thank you. Now it's typical, it's a different glue again. So I'm pushing it down and pushing it back at the same time and hopefully the glue around there and there will be sorted. I'll leave that to dry for a bit. So uh, the customers asked me to make sure these brackets are working. Work. So I thought, well, I'll do a short video of them actually working and everything's fine. So here are the clocks again. And being very careful. It's all, they're all solid and work a treat. Let's zoom out. There you go. And this one, I don't even know if I should hold it up there, but it does feel solid enough. And for the feet to go in there. So now you can see that you can hardly see the piece of wood underneath. It's really subtle and that's it really subtle these are all cleaned up now and you can you, it's so dark under here but let's see if I can put some light on there you go and this one all cleaned, waxed up, and they look great.